would you like to have a go at Ludo? Yeah. Okay, if you wouldn't mind having a seat, that can make it a bit easier. So if we perch on the edge. So, although they're small, I have two dice here. One of them is what we describe as random dice, and one of them is what we call biased dice. Have you heard the word biased before? Yeah. So, what would you take that to mean? Not balanced. Okay, not balanced. That's a good description. So, we're saying that one number might be more favoured than the others, yeah. not equal chance. So, have a feel of those two dice. It's easier if you feel them as a pair. And see if you can identify if there's a difference between them, and then think about which one you think might be biased and which one might be a random dice. Feel free to roll it if that's easier. That one what heavier. Yeah. Okay, so what might heavier mean? It's got a weight. Okay, and is that a good thing or a bad thing? Depends how evenly it's distributed. Okay, yeah, good answer. So what might we need to do to work out if it's a good thing or a bad thing? Have a few rolls. Yeah, absolutely. So have a go, roll them, see which one you fancy. Okay, so we're going to play a game of Ludo in a minute and you're going to get to pick which dice you want to play with. Okay. And we're going to do the shortened game of Ludo. So to give you a clue on the rules, you need to roll a six to get out of the house, which is this area here. And then we're going to play the short version, so you're just going to follow the dark circles up the middle. So you'll need to roll a six and then a five or more to win. So with that information, which dice would you like to play with? You can either play with one each or I can play with one and you two as a pair can play with the other one. Yeah. Okay, so you two as a team play with that one. What we're now going to do is you're both going to play with that dice. So if you play with the blue ones and you play with the purple and we need to roll a six to get the um, character out of the house and then at least a five on the next roll to get up to the middle. So why don't you go first? Okay, you got Six, great. So you get the character out of the house and you get another roll. A three, okay. So if you move your character three places, brilliant. And now it's your go with the purple counters. Ah, oh, six, great. So you get to go out of the house and you get another roll. What have we got? A one this time. Okay, my turn. Oh, a three. I'm stuck where I am. The blue counters again, your roll. Great, a two, oh, not quite there yet. Purple counters, you'll go. A four, oh, nearly, nearly. My turn, let's see if I can get out of the house. Oh, I'm still stuck where I am. Great, blue counters, you'll go again. And a six, great. Into the middle to finish it off. Brilliant. So, you did pick the bias die. It's leading to a six slightly more often, but as you've seen, you do get other numbers too. And the reason is that it's not a perfectly biased die, it doesn't always lead to a 6. It has a weight on the 1, which is why it's heavier, and so it does tend to lead to a 6 more often. This is the random die that has an equal chance of all 6 numbers. And so, um, although we can use it to cheat at games like this, a more useful application is if we're doing a clinical study and we need more patients in one group than another, we can use something like a biased die to get those increased patient numbers. Alice, thank you for taking part. You get a tiny mini dice. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much.